Hey everybody, today Rado runs through his top 10 travel games, but I will not be traveling through this alone. I am joined by Eleni. Hello. Eleni, how do you say your last name? I'm sorry. Papadopoulou. That sounds like there's an extra syllable at the end, but she swears there's not, so I didn't want to say it. But anyway, she's perhaps more commonly known on YouTube as the Cardboard Rhino. Mm -hmm. um, I think you are the only other person in Malta covering the Wild World exactly. of Board Games. Um, although, soon you will be alone because I'm doing this top 10 travel list today, because if you may have noticed in the background, we're moving. Look at my, I don't know if you can see. Yes, my, my, oh, everything's gone. All my games are in boxes. We're just about out of here. And before I left, I've, I've known Eleni for a while and I think her channel is great and I've wanted to do something with her. So you braved the stormy weather to ride the ferry over to Gozo yes, today. Um, you're probably still a little queasy from I the rocky <laughs> ride. Um, and we're going to talk about travel games. And I'm really glad she's here too because I think, well, considering the fact, show them, show, show, show them your prop. Considering the fact that yes. all of her games. All my top 10 list fits in here. Look at that. That's how you do a top 10 travel <laughs> list, folks. I'm afraid mine's gonna be a little bit more offbeat, but it'll be interesting to see, contrast and compare. Before I get going, Eleni, I could have asked you this before, but I asked you now, what's with the cardboard rhino? What does that mean? Oh, uh, well, cardboard is because it's about board games. The Rhino was something like a nickname I had because, uh, well, I, I, I played Dixit with my friends. Uh huh. And I was not very delicate or subtle about what oh. I was insinuating. So I was like, you know, kind of a Rhino in, in my um, way of playing. So I, I can't even imagine what that means in terms of Dixit. Uh, now I want to play Dixit with you yeah. to see this in action. <laughs> I'm trying, you know, I try to say something that uh, hints what I want to say, uh -huh. but it, it doesn't, oh. it shouldn't be very obvious. <laughs> and I'm always super obvious, but I think I'm not. So it's, it's like, <laughs> that makes sense. Then. I was afraid you were about to say, oh yeah, that's what all the kids called me when I was, because, <laughs> no. because of my nose or something, but no, 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 no your nose is great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I'm a total unprofessional. I apologize. Anyway, so you have a channel on yes. YouTube. You do, uh, you started out doing uh, how to plays. Yeah, and I still do that. Yeah, and that's still your main yeah. thing. But you've also, you're now on the Dice Tower Board Game Breakfast where you do Rhino Says Yes, which yes. is kind of a review slash recommendation show, yes, which is exactly. really, really great. And uh, there's a third thing. Oh, 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 yeah, you do Kickstarter roundups. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah, so it's a great every, channel. Every two weeks, I just. Uh, Make a collection of the the ones that I think that stand out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Present them and. Yeah. Well, cool. You can subscribe to Eleni if you want by hitting the I, which I think is right over her head, maybe, mm -hmm. or over my head. It's someplace, or just go down in the show notes. <laughs> but enough about her. Let's talk about travel. I'll start out with number ten. Although, no, I'll just say what it is, and then I'll explain myself afterwards. Hey, Eleni, you know what my number ten favorite travel game is? I have no idea. It's Ancient Terrible Things. All right. Yes. I haven't played that. That's <laughs> fine. You, I would have been surprised if you did. So Ancient Terrible Things is a Yahtzee style dice game, uh, you know, where we are traveling down a, a scary river trying to fight Ancient Terrible Things, all kinds of kind of Cthulhu-ish monsters, although it's, it's pretty light. It's not a really scary thing. But, you know, you have a bunch of dice that represent different, you know, bravery and whatnot. You roll them. Oh, I like these. You re-roll them. Oh, I like these. You set them aside. Now, here's the reason I don't think anybody would suspect Ancient Terrible Things being a good travel game. It comes in a big, gigantic box. It comes in a full, like, Agricola-sized box. Okay. You're going to find throughout my list these are all big box games, almost without exception, but they are what Jen and I like to travel with. Here's where I reveal my travel thoughts, and yours are gonna make a lot more sense to the folks at home, I think. When we travel, if we take games, we're generally not looking for things that we can just sit down and play in like 10 or 15 minutes, you know, while we're waiting for the yeah. tour bus or whatever. Um, you know, because those are the kind of games we play normally, and so if we're on vacation, we want to play the things we really, really love. So for me, a good travel game is one that offers like a big box experience, but that you can fit almost in a little backpack like that. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about Ancient Terrible Things is the expansion for it came in a small little expansion box, and you can fit all of the big box, all the dice, all the cards, everything into this little tiny expansion box, and then it would fit in your tiny little backpack just mm -hmm. fine. And it's a blast. It's so much fun. Um, the interesting thing about it from a gameplay point of view is, like I said, it's Yahtzee. You roll, you see what you like, you re-roll, you re-roll two times. But if you're going to re-roll, you have to re-roll everything. 
You can't set, oh, these dice are perfect. I just want to roll, no, it's all or nothing. You throw the good dice away to re-roll everything or not, and that creates so much tension. It's why we really, really enjoy it. And it's a really cool thematic romp. It takes about an hour to play. It's another thing. I mean, most of these games I'm going to talk about are on the longer side because, hey, we're sitting out on the patio, the veranda, wherever it is when we're on holiday or something like that. We want a good, solid, meaty game. Mm -hmm. And that's why number 10 for me is Ancient Terrible Things. And how about you? What's your number 10? So, yeah, my list is completely different. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the idea for me was to pick games that are easy to fit anywhere, like in your pocket, in your backpack, in your luggage if you're going away. And usually I like to have lighter games with yeah. me. Because when you travel, I think you mostly want to do travel stuff. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might want to play something while you're waiting, you know, in a, in a bar or in a, in a restaurant or something. See, I guarantee you, 90% of those people are going to agree with you. And that's why I was really happy to have you here. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's perspective, uh, I think. And uh, for me, the more I can fit in my backpack, the, the better. Because uh -huh. then I have more choice, yeah. you know. Because I might feel like a, a different game. Uh, so, yeah, in my number 10... There is a love letter. She actually brought her stuff, folks. I brought it. I would have, all of mine are surrounding us in boxes, but you actually have love letter here. Yeah, uh, it's really tiny. And actually, I think there is another version of it that is just the cards in a small bag. So you really yeah, can't yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, I think the original game did not have a box. Originally, it did come in a little uh, velvet possibly. pouch. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Exactly. So you have the newer actual proper yeah, box yeah, size. Yeah, yeah. yeah, But you can, you know, just put it in a small bag and take it. Um, it's a nice deduction game, you know, you can play it in the airplane, you can mm -hmm. play it anywhere. Oh, totally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's easy to get people, I mean, if you meet new people you want to play, it's like really easy to... Meeting new people is a very, very good point. I'll come yeah, back to that. Exactly. Here's my question yeah. for you. I love the idea of it. I've actually played it a few times. Mm -hmm. I think it's really clever and it's a terrible two-player game. I know it's not for two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not for two. You would agree. I mean, yeah. yeah, I've never played in two. I don't know how many it's supposed to be played with. Uh, I, it yeah, supports it officially. It has two-player special rules where you set a certain number of cards aside I and stuff like that. Two, no, I no, wouldn't no. either. At least, yeah, three, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To play this. But I think, yeah, it was made to be on a travel list. You know, yes, it, really, yes, exactly. Really small game. I, and I'm glad it's on this list because it wouldn't make mine and my list would be ridiculous. But now that you're here, you have officially... We're covering everything. Exactly. All right, so an excellent choice. Number 10, Love Letter for Eleni. And number nine for me is probably another one you haven't played. Capital? Mm, no. No. All right. So this is a SimCity style, uh, you know, link tiles down to build up, I believe, if I recall correctly, I think it's the city of Warsaw. And the game lasts over 200 years, like several eras of the growth and development of Warsaw because it is the capital. And the thing is, like Ancient Terrible Things, this is a full big box game, mm. but if you throw the box away, uh, it's really just a handful of tiles about this thick and some like little money tokens. You don't even need the money tokens. You could just use real coins if you want. And a board that is just there so you can keep track. I always travel with a nice little scoreboard tracker, so I don't need boards to keep track of stuff. And this is a brilliant, brilliant city building tile drafting game because it's the whole thing. Okay, I've got my tiles. You've got your tiles. I'm going to take one, hand the rest to you. And it works great too. It works great with more. And it is an incredibly meaty game. Uh, it's so tough to make choices every round because the main restriction is your section of the city you're building has to be, I think, three by four. And so, unlike a Carcassonne or something like that where you just build and build and build, here, no, you're stuck with this tiny little space. And every tile you take, you got to figure out, how do I actually make it fit in here? The interesting thing is, not only can you build outwards, but in a very tiny space, you can build upwards as well and demolish previous things because that's a part of the history of Warsaw. Uh, and in fact, it, towards the end of the game, in one of the later rounds, World War I and World War II come. And uh, when those things happen, your little district starts getting destroyed. Uh, and so you have to plan for that. It's a very simple game. It's really pure. It's almost as simple at the basic level as like a Sushi Go or something like mm -hmm. that. Maybe it's on. I bet you might be on this. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's as simple and light as that. And again, it's just a bunch of tiles, but incredibly deep, incredibly crunchy, easily an hour-long game. And again, the kind of thing that we're looking for when we're traveling. Hey, look, just this little bundle of stuff. We can play anywhere and just have an incredibly you know, deep time. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why Capital is a very weird choice for my number nine. What's your Sounds choice? Sounds really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. I absolutely and, love it. I mean, for me, I think one hour would be the maximum. Mm -hmm. 
uh, amount of time to play when I travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even more than that would be a bit. Do you have any that are an hour long? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we were not meant to travel together, obviously. <laughs> yes. All right. So my next uh, one, number nine, is Mintworks, which I did. I don't own the networks. Mint Mintworks. Oh, Mintworks. Mintworks. Oh, yes. So I, I don't have it, so I didn't bring it. But it's that that small. So yeah, I it's amazing. I could have easily put it in my backpack. Um, it's uh, you know for the size of it, it's mm -hmm. kind of a meeting game, I think. Yeah, I agree. Small, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's a worker placement game, and, and, and this one, and it fits the you know the the bill perfectly. No, yeah, I mean you, you don't even need a backpack. It fits in your pocket easily. It fits in the, your pocket. Yeah, 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 you can play anywhere. With it's anyone. Fast, with anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah easy to, to, to grasp. Um, yeah, you can have it permanently in your pocket and, and play whenever you can. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's kind of a, um, you know a, a nice um, use of, of worker placement. I think mm -hmm. the amount of of uh, cards you have and, and the like uh, the components. Yeah, and it's interesting too because it's a worker placement game where everybody shares the same pool of workers. Mm -hmm. It's not like I've got yeah, my five, yeah. you got your five. No, there's just yeah, a fixed yeah, number, and we're kind of you know vying for who's got more workers than each other and all the little cards that lay out. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a fair bit of free playability because the game comes. Exactly. I don't remember how many, like 20 cards, but you only see a certain number of yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it is really good. That is. It's, it's, um... If I had a normal list, it would have totally made my normal list. But yeah, I actually, I think, if I recall correctly, I put that on our, t uh, when I did a top 10 restaurant games. Because it's, oh, it's perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 just having your back pocket, waiting for the food to come, just bang out a quick little 10 minute game of Mintworks. Yeah, so how I thought of the travel list was also, you know, not traveling far, but going to a restaurant. What do you think mm -hmm. if you want to play as well? Not like really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traveling far, so yeah, mint works. Works. It is. I, I, it does, and I highly recommend it. Okay, so now on to number eight, and here's where I kind of break my rule earlier about looking for bigger box games that we can play in about an hour, but it's still that's really my thing. It can pack down into a fairly small package if you toss the box. Uh, so my number eight, I guess it's still true that it does that, but it's code names. Oh, okay. Yeah, you played code names. Yeah, yes, yeah, I love everybody's codenames. played code it, names. It's not on my list though because I think it takes a lot of table space. But, yes, it but does. Still, it's like a, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you lay out the grid of stuff, it's yeah. a brilliant game. And uh, also, I mean, if, if you're only just taking one version, either pictures or regular code names or code names duet, it's just a stack of cards. That's that's basically it, and then the, like the cardboard yeah. things to cover it up. It's incredibly portable, uh, and in fact, I mean, actually, I have fit duets and pictures and regular code names all in my regular code names box. So I can just take that. And now the reason I put it on, and I have to admit, it, it's interesting you mentioned your, your Rhino story. In If you had talked, if I made this list two years ago, it would have been Dixit. Dixit would have had this place. Yeah. Uh, because Dixit and now code names instead are great get to know random stranger games. They're mm -hmm. perfect for that. Mm -hmm. Because while when Jen and I travel, we pretty much stay to ourselves. Uh, but there, sooner or later, you're gonna be at a dinner table with somebody or you know, if you're part of a travel group or something like that, or like, what are they always doing all the way playing their games? Do you have any you can play with us? I have code names. <laughs> and, and Dixit is great. I mean, we've actually traveled a lot with Jen's parents, uh, my, my, uh, my in-laws? Yes. And oh my God, playing Dixit with them over the years in, uh, in various countries around Europe was just an amazing mm -hmm. experience, particularly Jen's dad, who is absolutely insane. Um, I, he just makes, I, I would love to see you play him, you with your very blatant, straightforward stuff and him with his just completely random, nobody can understand what he means <laughs> kind of thing. It'd be an interesting game. Dixit is great, particularly because again, if you forget about the box, forget about, because you can just use this to keep track of score. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a stack of cards. Yeah. I've removed it though and replaced it with code names because code names has the extra benefit of being a really great two player game. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of people don't yeah, realize yeah. this. A lot of people think of code names, well you got to have at least 3 because there's the code giver and the and the the clue takers, but it's it has an official two player variant. Exactly, it's very good. It's very very good. So, I eventually I had to say goodbye to Dixit. Always still love it. It's the only game we own that doesn't support two players cuz Jen loves it mm -hmm. so much, but it's off the list. Code Names is my number eight, an awesome travel game, uh, just for when you're alone together and you've got a little bit of time to kill. But more importantly, when oh, I'm in a social situation. Okay, I'll just bust this out. I'll be the clue giver. Everybody will have a great time. Doesn't matter how many people are sitting mm -hmm. at the table. It's perfect yeah, exactly, for that. Yeah. All right. Everyone loves Code Names. Everybody. Yes, it's amazing. All right. 
Except it's not on your list. It's not on my list, though. Yeah, because of the, the table space. Yeah, all of the table space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. But it's I a do fair like point. It a lot, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, number eight. Number eight is uh, HMS Dolores. Oh. Yeah. I I've heard it, of this. I have it right here. This is uh, Eric Lang, right? And he co-designed with somebody else, I think. Uh, I'm not sure who designed it. Bruno Faduti and Eric Lang. Oh, yes. Exactly. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's. That many cards, you don't yep. really forget the box, rest. leave it at home. Yeah, it's uh, really fun uh, because basically uh, you are a pirate that mm -hmm. you try to uh, divide the loot that you stole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you try to figure out how. So you have these cards which are, are the loot, and you have these uh, hand gestures that you have. I'm looking at them right there, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So in order to get like two of them or specific cards of the ones you can get, you need to do a specific gesture and the other person needs to do the specific gesture mm -hmm. that leads to that action. Yeah, yeah. So you have to think, uh, it's, it's, you have to strategize a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. you need to figure out what you need because in the end, the cards you, you get, you only count the ones that are the, the most and the least. Uh, not the rest of the stuff you're you're collecting. Okay. So you building up your strategy as you go because okay. you don't know which one is going to okay. be highest or lowest, and then you have to figure out which one of the cards you need. You need to figure out which gesture you need to do, hand gesture, mm -hmm. and what expect what the other person is going to do. So you get what you want. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's a lot of uh, yeah thinking in that, but it's very fast, and I think the the hand gesture thing is very clever. What what like what 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 are these hand gestures? Do a gesture at me. So. Uh, you can do, it's like um, rock, paper, scissors. Okay, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, so you have one, two, three, and you do something. Uh -huh. uh, you can do this, uh, you can do this, uh, you can do this. Okay. So, yeah, if I do this and you do this, all then right. you take all four cards that are down. Uh, I do. There are four, yeah, you do. Because fist beats open hand yeah like oh you're going for a handshake and i went in for a punch yeah, yeah exactly. is that what it is it's, it's, it's like the kind that. of the story yes, yeah yes, yes exactly you're like hey we all agree no we don't yeah, I, okay yeah, like, and so i take everything making the deal for sharing and i'll go like this and you go like this so uh -huh. you get everything okay uh so i think it's it's really fun yeah so as i understand it's basically a prisoner's dilemma uh it, it's based on that uh, thing the notion that hey if we all just kind of agree to take a little bit everybody will get but if one person says oh exactly. i'm gonna break the rule yeah, then i get everything yeah, yeah, yeah. but if everybody says i break the rule then nobody gets anything it's like it's that. kind of it's that. Like yeah. that yeah yeah the, the way of yeah have you played this as a two-player game i played it with yeah how is it as a two-player two? game it was fun. Yeah. I was a bit drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Another so great use for uh, travel games. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's good with alcohol. It's, good. Uh, it's a good two-player game. Yeah, but it's better with with three yeah, 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 yeah. or more. Cool. It's a really fun, fun game. Like it's uh, very refreshing. I don't know. I really love playing it. Yeah, and yeah, like I said, it's perfect for a and night it's out. It's easy to get new people. Mm -hmm. it. It's like how many does it support? How high a player? Uh, uh, it says four. Two to four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent one. That's so, an excellent yeah. one. So far, I think people like your list better than mine. I think. <laughs> All right. But now, um, on to my number seven, which, again, I, I start out saying a rule, and then I'm breaking the rule right away. Uh, I'm going to talk about a little portable game called Avenue. I haven't played it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you, you, well, I haven't played Dolores, so okay. we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Avenue is a super portable game where everybody, it's one of those games, it's kind of bingo-esque in that everybody has a piece of paper and everybody writes down the piece of paper mm -hmm. and there's a common deck of cards. This is pretty much the whole game. It's a pad of paper and these cards. And we draw a card and whatever the card says, whether it's uh, the card that says make a left turn or, or draw a straight line, uh, everybody does that somewhere on their piece of paper. It's a little grid. And what we're trying to do is there's these little cities on our grids and we're trying to connect them via roads. So, uh, and you know, while you might think, oh, everybody just ends up doing the same thing, that's not what happens. I end up trying to connect these two roads and you connect these two roads. And every once in a while, the, uh, every we draw and start drawing, every once in a while we'll have to stop and score, uh, but, but we won't know what we're gonna score until we get there. And so there's a little bit of push your luck. Okay, well, am I actually, am I trying to connect the right things? Do I have more time? If I can just get one more straight away, I can connect this city and this city will be worth a ton of points. And, oh, I didn't get it, we're scoring now. Arr! While you're over there, it's like, yes, it's perfect. You know, and so there's a lot of that stuff Stuff. And it's another really great social game. Uh, it's just like I said, it's a pad of paper. You get everybody a piece of paper, you get everybody a pencil, let everybody know what card is being drawn every round. Everybody does their own thing, and um, you see who came out the best. It's great. I, the most I've played it with, I think, is seven. 
but you can play it with 70 if you have enough pieces of paper. Uh, so it's another really good light, tiny footprint game you can take with you anywhere. Incredibly easy to teach to anybody. So, and unlike HMS Dolores or Love Letter, also works very well with two. Jen and I really enjoy it. It's just a fun little two player thing. Good for playing on a plane also. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause all you just need is to be able to write on the tray in front of you. How, how long is it? Oh, it's, it's a 15 minute game, 10, 15 oh, minute game, mm -hmm. depending on how quick you go. Yeah, uh, I think it might've made my restaurant list as well. Yeah, so these two uh, were the ones that I brought along basically to be social with people if I have to. Not that we normally do that, but um, these are both great for that. So I strongly recommend Avenue. But anyway, what do you got for number seven? Number seven. Uh, ah, of Hanabi? course. Uh, how's it pronounced? Hanabi? I, I say Hanabi. Hanabi, maybe. Uh, yeah, so it's a very nice uh, cooperative two-player game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, very uh, refreshing, I guess. I mean, you don't really usually get a lot of cooperative two-player games. No, 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 no. Uh, so this one, you hold your cards um, in a way that you don't see them, but your, your partner sees yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you try to uh, coordinate each other, so you put the right cards down and you, you make fireworks happen. <laughs> So it's a, it's a very cute game, uh, tiny, you can put it anywhere, yep. and uh, I think, you know, brings closer to, mm -hmm. to friends, maybe it's nice to, to cooperate on something, yep, it's yep, yep. Um, kind of um, funny not being able to, to see what you have and you need. It's hard to get used to that. It's, hard it's to so anything. hard. The first time hard, you get yeah. anybody, they always just pick up their cards and, no, oh, okay, let's reshuffle everything out. <laughs> Because, yeah, no one's allowed yeah, to look. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. absolutely, and I forget the specifics of what the clues are you can give, because I have to give you clues. Um, oh, yeah, I, I can point at things and say, these are all a particular type of number, or they're all a particular type of color. Is that uh, what yes, it is? Yes, yeah, yes, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. Again, it's a really good game. you should play it with my father-in-law, because <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all just trying to feed him clues, and then comes his turn, and he's like, oh, please, Ed, just pick that one. And he says, nope, that is a five. <laughs> Your wife just told me that five seconds ago. It's crazy. But yeah, it's so, this is a great, this is a good party game, quite frankly. Um, but it's for two people. Well, no, no, it, it, you can play higher. Really? Oh, yeah. Have you never played Hanabi with more players? Uh, no. Oh, no, my God. Five. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Cardboard oh, Rhino right. is having her mind blown today, I, folks. <laughs> you have to try it. Uh, because okay, then, it, then you have to be thinking about, oh, okay, I give clues to you. I give clues to you. It, it gets a lot... Honestly, I think I do enjoy it more as a two-player game because it's it's. I just it's focus only on your hand. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. I'll, I've got to try it then. Yeah. Oh, you have to. You have to. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I have to try it. Okay. Yeah. And a perfect, perfect My travel game. Uh, travel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So that was number seven. Number six. Oh, I forgot about this one. Yes. Okay. I have one more. The rest after number six are going to be bigger box things. It pretty much just for me and Jen. They're heavier experiences. But I have one more light, fast-playing, super portable game called Fuse. Uh, yes, it's a real-time cooperative <laughs> dice rolling game where we're, each of us has a bomb, a little card that represents a bomb in front of us, and every round we roll dice, uh, and the dice basically just, they're numbered dice, they say one, two, three, four, five, or six, they have colors and numbers associated with them, and to, to defuse my bomb, I desperately need a red three. And round after round, red threes are not coming out. And finally, a red three comes out. And it's okay. Uh, after we roll, every, this game goes as fast as you can. We just roll. Everybody takes dice, and then we grab more of a bag, roll. And you, we only have 10 minutes to defuse all our bombs. And like, I've been waiting for that red three forever. And you're like, I too have been waiting for the red three. And so the, the tricky thing about it is in real time, we're having to negotiate and figure out, okay, who needs it more? Now, you don't need a red three. You just need a three. I mean, but whereas I need specifically a red three. So if you just wait for a green three or something oh, okay. like that... Um, but you're like, well, no, but if I, this is the last thing I need. You still have two more you have to do. And I'm like, yeah, but this is my only chance. And while we're having this conversation, the clock is ticking. And we don't have time to have this conversation, but we need to have this conversation because we both want that die. Because the other thing is, every round, a certain number, depending on number of players, of dice is rolled. If we don't take all of the dice that come out, we suffer a penalty. So we also have to work out, well, somebody's got to take that yellow one. Anyone? No one can take it because then, then we have to pick it up and we have to re-roll and everybody has to potentially lose uh, yellow or whatever number it comes out. And so, I was just about to do it and nobody took the yellow one. It's very frantic, a lot of fun. The whole thing, it's like Love Letter, just fits in a little tiny cloth mm -hmm. bag because it's just some dice and some cards. And super easy to teach. A really great social game. Um, Sounds like fun, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I think you would definitely love it yeah. uh, based on the stuff you've chosen so yeah. far. 
I'd play it with you, except it's probably in that box right there, and I'm not opening that box. How up. can you know in which box it is? It's like so many. <laughs> I'm lying. I don't oh. know. <laughs> she called me out. She called my bluff. But anyway, it's fantastic. I absolutely adore it. Um, you know, so much so. Yeah, you know, because also because it's cooperative too. And I think um, you know. If you're trying to introduce new people, if you just meet random strangers and you gotta do something with them, and well, okay, I guess you could talk about their family and their life back home, but who wants to do that? Let's just play a game. Uh, it's really good to jump into a cooperative experience because most non-board gamers, probably the number one thing they don't realize is, yeah, you, we, this doesn't have to be Monopoly where I steal all your stuff. <laughs> uh, we can actually work together, and I think that's like the biggest, that's one of the best things in terms of gatewaying people into games is, let's just work together on solving this problem. And like, you can do that? Oh, okay. I mean, I could take this home and play this with my kids and we could actually solve problems together and that sounds great. So Fuse is fantastic, it's my number six. Awesome. What's your number six? Number six, I have a cockroach poker. Okay, uh, or what, auf Deutsch it is uh, yeah, it's Cockerlocken <laughs> poker, or Cockerlocken poker, is there an umlaut on there? Cockerlocken poker, although you uh, apparently have the royal version of it. Um, uh, not sure what that means in German, <laughs> yeah. So you have these cards, it's just these, uh, this deck of yeah. cards, and they have um, critters, I guess, like cockroaches, uh, stink bugs, and, and what, whatnot. They seem to be about as adorable as a cockroach or a rat can be. Yeah, exactly. They're disgusting, but cool. <laughs> At the same time, like the cards, like the illustrations are awesome. And it's uh, basically a reverse uh, set collection game. You, you try, it's a bluffing game. Mm -hmm. You try to get one of the players to, to have four of the same um, uh, critter, if it's called like that, like the same uh, disgusting creature. Oh, you mean, I don't want four, I want you to have four. Yes, yes. I see, you get, okay. You get rid of cards uh -huh, and uh -huh. uh, people try to, to see if you're bluffing or not. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a very nice bluffing game, uh, very quick. Um, I don't know, it, it's, it makes my mood because <laughs> of the, the nice illustrations and stuff. Uh -huh. Uh, it's a great party game and I really like party games that have bluffing elements to them because I think it's... Because nice. you're the rhino and you're terrible at it? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> and also because I think, you know, it's it's a great way to, to get to know other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That because you, you take the time to figure out how other people are thinking and you react to that and mm -hmm. it's okay to lie, it's mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, playful mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, so it's a great party game. I wow, think. I've never even heard of it. Um, Probably because it doesn't support two, I bet. No. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, let me find that. Oh, it does. Two to six. Really? I've never played with two. I wouldn't recommend it, I think. Yeah, I bet. Because it's all about the, you know. The social, the, the bluffing. Social the, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So Cockroach poker. poker. Delightful. Yep. All right. Cool. So, on to number five. I'm getting back to just me and Jen sitting down playing heavier games, which is really what we want to do, because it's our favorite thing to do. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. again, I, I feel like I need to justify because your list just makes so much sense. And my list is so weird. But yeah, I just, the number of times we've been traveling places, because we've lived in Malta and before that England for gosh, almost 15 years now, and we've loved traveling all over Europe and seeing all kinds of stuff. But there's always going to be some afternoon where, okay, what we were going to do did, fell through, or we don't really have anything planned, and our feet are so tired. <laughs> Let's just sit down and play a game this afternoon. You know, like what we play back home. For us, that's why, for us, these travel games, with the exception of those social ones I just mentioned, are all about trying to be able to bring a little bit of home along exactly. with us. That's what we want, and that's why number five for me is Targi. Um, I don't know this. Oh, that's okay. Um, I, I, my tastes run towards the Euro. It's a, whereas yours seem to be a bit more social type mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. It's a worker placement game where you, uh, it's basically just you, you have your workers, you, you have some cards. I think it comes with a board that you probably don't need because again, it's just a scoreboard and you can keep track of score there. But basically, all the cards that represent all the different places you could work or get put out in a grid. But the interesting thing is, I on my turn, I don't put a worker. I want that card that will give me you know, three dates or will give me this special power. Instead, I put my worker on this the top of the row that the card is in or, you know, on, on, or on the column. And then you end up putting one of your workers over here on this column. And then I put mine over here. After we put all our workers on the outskirts of this grid, okay, this worker and this worker, they come, this is the card I get. And that is such a really, really interesting 
planning problem mm -hmm. because you know if you weren't here if I was just playing this by myself yeah okay I want that that and that I would, so the best way for me to get the cards I want would be put a person here here and here because they'll triangulate and these two will give me that card that'll give me that card but the problem is as soon as you put any of your workers down on at the head of a row or a column I cannot put them opposite so you've kind of claimed an entire row and like that row is half of the cards I wanted, and I can't do it. Okay, okay, fine, I'll rethink now that you've done that, and I'll try to grab this column because the thing I want is still in this column. And so you can, you, it's a really interesting mind screw of a game because it, on the surface, it's just a really simple worker placement game. I, we buy workers, we get our stuff, but there's so much planning that goes into it. And um, you know, it's not like this is a game where, oh, I see what you're trying to do. I will destroy what you're trying to do. It's just, no, I'm just trying to do my stuff. You're trying to do your stuff. But you know, it's such a tiny little grid we're working on that there's just like this indirect tension and conflict. Oh my gosh, I can't get what I want now. I, everything I've done is for this. Oh wait, I could still do that. And then if you, if I think you're going to go there, then I, and, and we love it. I mean, it's just, it's, you know, we just completely forget where we are for the 40 to 60 minutes this game takes to play. Uh, absolutely brilliant, wonderful worker placement game, Target. All right. All right. That sounds cool. I agree. It does sound cool. Uh, for me, my yes. number five is, uh, let me find it. Is Skull. Ah, is that the full name of it? Uh, or no, I'm thinking of like it Skull and Roses. Skull and Roses. Yeah, yeah, but that's different than this, right? I think it's exactly the same oh, thing. Okay, so it has two different names. Maybe it's a, it was a, a previous version mm -hmm. of it. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I think yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like that. So this is the perfect game to play in a bar because <laughs> everything looks like a coaster. No, that means it's a terrible game to play because all your drunk friends will use them as coasters. <laughs> well, they're so pretty. Yeah, you want to kind of <laughs> yeah, keep exactly, them safe. Yeah. Uh, but it's another bluffing game. I, I think it's a really good uh, party game too, mm -hmm. uh, where you try to uh, figure out how many, uh, you're kind of bidding how many um, of them uh, you can turn over yeah. and not uh, get a, a skull. Oh, okay, okay. So that's what you do on your turn. You try to grab as many of these discs as possible. No, you put down one yeah. by one. Yeah. At uh, some point, when you don't want to put any more down or you can't, then you start the challenge. So you can oh. say, okay, I'll do three, sort of. Oh, okay. Uh, you um, flip over three of them and not get a skull. Mm -hmm. uh, if oh. you, and then the others say more. So when everyone passes, the one with the highest bid gets to um, do the chat. Okay, okay, yeah, it's kind of like uh, name that tune. I can name that tune in eight notes. I can uh, name it in yeah, six. Exactly. I can name it in three. Name that tune exactly. and good luck. And there's another thing. game like robots, I think, where you try to find the shortest way of mm -hmm. a robot to move in a space. Uh -huh. And you call the shortest. Uh, mm, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's mm -hmm. Kind of like that. Uh, but um, yeah, so you uh, there's a lot of bluffing involved mm -hmm. because of course you know what you put down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, you try to get people to high to the bit higher to get your skull. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a really simple game. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I'm I'm just looking at it. It's yeah, gorgeous. So it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Number five is called. I think we're not going to have any crossovers at all. I don't. Think I so. thought for sure I was going to get you on code names. I, I, uh, I felt really good about that. And like, and you would have yeah. considered it except for the table space, right? I did consider it because yeah, for you, table space is paramount. You just want to be able to play these things anyway. Uh, yeah. Basically, I thought that this list was about that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, it is we... for you. If uh, well, if I traveled with like my partner or whatever, I would mm. get code names duet. I think mm -hmm. definitely. But because of the table space, I didn't think to put it in, in the yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. But it's one of the games I definitely would like to have with me. I too. All right, cool. Uh, Skull, or previously known as Skull and Roses, yes. I think. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, on to my number four. Uh, this is another one people just will say I'm just ridiculous, but Glenn Moore is a t wonderful tile laying game. Um, you know, Carcassonne like, uh -huh. where we are you know, putting tiles down to build up our own little Scottish Highland. 
Uh, and the interesting thing about this is, well, first of all, it's not like Arkzone that we're all putting the same. I'm building my little area, you're building your little Highlands area. Every time I put a tile down, I get to activate whatever it is, whether it you know, generates whiskey or, or um, you know, cattle or whatever. And I also activate every tile I put it next to. So this is an incredibly thinky, puzzly game as you're trying to build up, because you can see, hey, here's the next three or four tiles I might be able to grab because they're all on display. And like, okay, if I grab that one and put it in this slot, it'll activate these two things that will give me the resources that on my next turn, I'll be able to actually put something over here and turn them all into a bunch of points. And it's, it's just an incredibly puzzly, very, very tough game. And um, again, if you toss the box, and I would say even toss the board, it, it comes with a board that keeps track of how much various resources are worth, but you don't need it. If you know the game well enough, it's just some cards and some tiles and a little die. And it's absolutely fantastic. We love it to bits. And again, it's just that perfect, hey, let's just ch chillax for an afternoon and play a really rough, tough, thinky, mm. thinky, crunchy tile land game. How about one more? There are some days that you just need that. Yes. And most people would think, well, no, you're you're in you're in Amsterdam. <laughs> go to a go go to a pot bar. And like, well, no, our feet are so tired. We're so old. <laughs> that's us, and that's why uh, Glenn Moore is my number four. How about you? Cool. Uh, mine is troll. Troll. Um, let me find it. I wasn't sure which one of the Oink games to to. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Because I think all of them are awesome for traveling. Uh, they're so pretty and so small. They are adorable, yes. I think yeah. you've done a video for this one, right? I did. Yeah, yes. that, that's how I know about this yes, one, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I wasn't sure which one because I also like uh, In a Grove, Twins, like they're all the same size. There's a little submarine one, I think. Um, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know which yeah, one right. would be that. But uh, Troll, I think, uh, is the most um, good for, for socializing as well. There's a lot of interaction. And not so much, you know, super thinky kind mm -hmm, of situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's you, you're all thieves in mm -hmm. the game. You try to uh, steal uh, diamonds from the troll. Yeah. And um, every round, like not um, not all of the thieves get away with it. So you try to be among the ones that get away with stealing the the diamonds. Uh, so it depends on you try to see what other people have put down in terms of um, bidding. So okay. you, I, I bid I want to steal four, mm -hmm. then another one steals three, or okay. so on. Um, so you try to uh, figure out what others are going to bid, and you um, put your own. So it's more about guessing how other people think, yeah. and a little bit of uh, kind of deduction, because you have specific tokens you can use, you can use the same one more than once. Um, it's it's very cute. I've played it in, in a restaurant as well. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's it's great. Like a, it's a nice uh, filler kind of yeah yeah yeah. Game. And, and and it's gorgeous too. It's with gorgeous. That. It, all the pieces are really minimal. Yeah. Uh, really beautiful and yeah, it fits. And another one, not for two. Uh, not for two. Yeah. Three Have three any of yours five. been good for two? I guess the, oh, Hanabi, um, Hanabi's Hanabi, brilliant for two. Yeah, and the rest of them are for two. The ones I, uh, the, the, the top three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, because I was wondering. Because, um, I mean, you must travel with tons of people all the time. It's <laughs> what I was getting the impression. You never go out with just your partner. But no, so that's still coming, which is why they're your favorites. They're at the top of your list. These are. Well, these are the kind of games I take with me when I go somewhere with friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to convince people to play with me. Ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, <laughs> you know? uh -huh. like, Because they're sick of it. Elaine, all right, okay. <laughs> we just can't go out for drinks without Elaine pulling something yeah, out of her purse. Awesome. becoming a bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that. So yeah, you can resist that. So yeah. It's, oh, it's all, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So nice. All right. So that was four. Troll. Uh, number three for me. I guarantee you've never heard of it because it's only available in Germany. Um, it is called Kashgar, Merchants of the Silk Road, or Handler der Seidenstrasse, if you go for the original Deutsch. <laughs> and it's an interesting thing. I mean, I'm sure you've played Dominion yeah. or in deck builders mm -hmm. like that. Imagine Dominion where you're building three decks at once. And, um, you know, and, and you're trying to manage what all the decks have in them because you can get, okay, this is the deck that's really good at generating resources. This is the deck that's really good at turning those resources into points. This is the deck that's really good, you know, or however you want to build them. But they all work independently. And um, the challenge of the game is, you know, getting the right cards, slipping them in here, and then running those decks to 
synchronized with everything else. It's an awesome, amazing game. I absolutely love it. Right. And uh, what's the name again? It's um, it's just Kashgar with a K. Kashgar. 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 Which I think is a city that was on the Silk Road. I, I think is famously. Oh. Um, and you know, it's it's all about you know collecting spices and you know using them to make money so you can buy provinces back home. You know, it's it's a standard Euro style thing. But oh man, it is the first time Jen and I played this. We were just grinning from ear to ear because. Well, we don't play games like you. We just play boring, dry, weird things where we're so excited about selling spices. But you know, the, the 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 amount of thought that has to go into juggling these three different decks all running at the same time, um, you know, and setting them up so that this one will fire right when this one's ready to fire and give me the card because this one's no good if I can't get to this card. But the card in this one is at the bottom of the deck, and I got to bring it to the top of the deck. How am I going to do that? Oh, I keep filling more stuff into this deck. I can never get to what I need to. It's 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 a blast, and it's such a shame. Now, I, I've actually talked about this a few times, and I know every time I talk about cash cards, like what? I don't speak German. Um, why do you keep toying toying with us, taunting us, Rado? I have heard recently that it is actually going to get an American print run. Uh, some other publisher, I want to say. I'm not going to say because I probably remember right, but uh, supposedly 2018 is the year that Kashgar will finally be available off English, and I can't recommend it enough because again, it's another great travel game, uh, and this one would work better for you because oh yeah, I just got my three cards here. It doesn't take up that much mm -hmm. space, and it is really just, no. Actually, that's not true. I was going to say uh, it doesn't take up much space, but it kind of does because. I have a board. Every player has a board that's about this big, like a big old A4 size piece of paper that you, you move markers up and down to keep track of how many resources you've got. And that might make say, well, God, I, that, 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 that's huge. It's gigantic. The reason it works for us as a travel game is because a fan of Rado Runs Through knew how much we love the game and sent me specialized versions of that, um, that resource tracking board that are the same size as all the cards of the game. And so with that, we can make it the ultimate travel game. So I'm actually told, now that I think about it, I shouldn't even have put this on the list because even if you get Kashgar, it's still gonna be a tough one to fit in your backpack because everybody has their crazy boards and nobody except for me and this fan of mine actually has these cool travel boards. Maybe they will consider making a travel version? I think they should because yeah, it's a great, great travel game for folks who really like mm. heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we don't have much to talk about because you haven't played it, but that's okay. Um, if I wasn't leaving in two days, I would have you come over and play it and say, wow, this is amazing, because it is. It's my number three, Kashgar! Awesome. Hamler der Seidenstrasse. And how about you? <laughs> well, I have... Uh, and do it in Spanish or Greek, So because I just busted out my German. Well, you can impress actually, everybody. this is in, in, in Italian. Okay. Le città perduta or something? <laughs> I, I don't know Italian, but yeah. <laughs> But I have a game in Italian. It's Lost Cities. Lost Cities, yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite two-player games. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Let it's, me ask. It's so I'm just going to jump out. Was this a gateway game for you? Because I know it is for a lot of couples. Yeah, it is. It really was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well. Oh, my gosh. You have played this thing a lot, haven't you? Yeah, it's a bit more now. You guys can't tell. And this thing has been beat to hell and, and back. And I can tell you, I've never lost. Not once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've never lost in Lost Cities. It's, it's, it's yeah. That's pretty well, ballsy to put out there. Uh, yeah. Now you're going to have people coming at you. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I love this game a lot. Mm -hmm. It's very engaging. Uh, it's very simple as well. You try to, to have the, the highest uh, the score in the end, mm -hmm. but uh, you are directly competing. Although you're working um, on different kind of um, cities or whatever yeah. they're called. Yeah, archaeological dig sites that you're trying to uncover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're working in different ones with uh, the opponent, but then if you are on the same one, there is a limited amount of cards you can use for each um, kind of row. Mm -hmm. So there is a direct competition in that. Um, the trickiest thing, uh, the, the thing that's so amazing about this game is, I've got these cards. I can't play them. So, oh, I'll just go on ahead and discard them out mm -hmm. public and so I can get this out of my hand and get something I really need. But what if you need that card? Exactly. You don't know what the other one needs. Exactly. Like That's the brilliant in, thing. In his hands and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I find it very engaging. Like, uh, I, it passed like this, like the time you mm -hmm. don't play, play this. Uh, it's one of my best, uh, my top um, two player games. Uh, yeah. Most cities. Yep, and yep. It's, it's kind of, uh, it's not big. I mean, if you. If you compare it with the ones you mm -hmm. have on your list, <laughs> it's a small one. Uh oh, snap. Uh, but if you take away the, the board... You don't need the board. Card. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. It's just a deck of cards, and there's so much game in that. This is one of Jen's favorites, too. Yeah? And much like you have never lost, I have never won. 
Oh, really? Oh, it's so <laughs> sad. So I'm not going to play that with you ever because I already feel bad enough. That game makes me feel stupid. But it's but brilliant, it's a yeah. Game, yeah. It's it's yeah, a, a fantastic. It's fantastic in every step of the way, except that you can't play it with more players. Hey, you, you know, there's a, a little mini expansion for it, right? That adds a sixth color. Uh, no, I yeah. don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, Although actually you wouldn't be able to play with it because your copy is so old and beat up. The, the <laughs> promo cards would just like pop up. Oh look, they're bright, brand new and shiny. So you wouldn't be able to use it. But yeah, that is a well-loved game there. Cool. Hi <laughs> Daisy. All right. so lovely, the, the doggies. <laughs> yep. Hi Honey Pie. Uh, while we've been filming, Jen has just gotten back. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, that was number, that was three, right? Yes. That was three. On to number two. Hey Honey Pie. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite game with dice? My number two is Roll for the Galaxy. Uh, you probably couldn't hear us or her on the mics, but Jen loves Roll for the Galaxy. I love Roll for the Galaxy. I don't know if you've played it, but you've, you're familiar with Roll for the Galaxy, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Have you played it? Yes, yes, I've played it. It's you really like? fun, really, really, uh, yeah. It's like it. so good! Have you played Race for the Galaxy, the, the original uh, card game it's based on? No. Because mm. no. everybody always asks, okay, well, Roll for the Galaxy, we hear it's great, awesome, but should I get Roll or Race? Everybody's always asking, because mm. Race for the Galaxy, is, it's basically the same game, but 100% with cards instead of with dice. And, and also, Race for the Galaxy would be a very, very good travel game as well, because it's just a deck of cards and some chips to keep track of score. Mm -hmm. A Roll for the Galaxy, if anything, is a little bit bigger, because... You, it all can go in a cloth bag, but it's like a really big cloth bag because um, of all the tiles and all the dice. But yeah, it's so, so good. Jen loves it to death. I love it. We have played it so much now. We, just the two of us sitting down, we could play from start to finish. Um, getting out of the box, setting up, and playing it in like 15 minutes because we are just we are so fast. I mean, um, we've got it down like you probably have Lost Cities down, and it's just yeah. absolutely amazing. Um, and the beautiful thing, too, is originally it came in a big, gigantic box, and it would be really not very good for traveling, but it got an expansion. I forget the name of the expansion, and everything for the game, plus the expansion, all fits in the little tiny expansion box, which would fit, again, in your backpack. Mm -hmm. So that's why, um, when I was thinking about travel games, it's one that I don't think we would leave home without, mm -hmm. because Jen loves it so much. I mean, it's literally one of Jen's top 10 favorite games of all time probably in her top three and it's in my top 20 and it's great for travel about the only bad thing about it getting back to like in the earlier in the list i had this um hey these are really good games to play with other people roll for the galaxy is a terrible game to teach have you ever tried to teach it to somebody mm, no it's no. awful because because <laughs> the problem is everything's secret so everybody's yeah. working behind their screens and I'm like, and everybody's like, well, how do I use this? And how does this die work? And, yeah. and it's just, oh, it's, it's a nightmare. I've taught this game easily a dozen times. I've never gotten good at it. But um, it's just great for couples traveling. Um, and I guess for us, it's a filler, but yeah, wouldn't leave home without it. And it would make the top sci-fi game list. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, spoiler alert. I actually, I originally invited Eleni to come and join me on my top 10 sci-fi because the first video you did for Tom Vassell's Board Game Breakfast was a sci-fi game. Yeah, so I thought, this girl loves sci-fi. Because I mean, she couldn't name any. You couldn't name any of these, but you started with sci-fi. But no, you don't love sci-fi. I, it's not my favorite thing. Yeah, yeah. But like I, I told you earlier, like it's the kind of thing that I wouldn't be excited, but at the end of the game, I yeah. would like it a lot. But it's not something I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I made a, a list for sci-fi games. Yeah. Oh, you did! And, and Ro Roll for the Galaxy. We, would have, we probably would have had a lot more crossover on that list than we do Maybe. on this one. Yeah, yeah. We made a <laughs> terrible mistake, folks. But um, we're almost through. What crazy random thing do you have that makes a lot more sense than mine for your uh, number two? Well, I think it's kind of uh, predictable. It's giant. Of course, of course. Course, yes. Yeah, I should have known. As soon as you said, oh, this one works for two. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is uh, one of the best to player games and it's the one I've taken with me the most, I think. Mm. I always feel like it. Then why isn't it your number one? Uh, or can you not say until we get to number I'll one? I'll tell you. Oh, okay, when, okay. When we go there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, if I need to, to explain the game, I think it's... It's a pretty popular game, I think. It's an exactly. awesome... Like Lost Cities, yeah. it's like one of the premier couples exactly. gamer yeah, games yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a great game if, if you if you if you have a loved one a spouse a family member and you're like they want to join you in games and they don't understand i don't want to play agricola with you mm -hmm. uh it's uh, it's so compelling the camels the camels yeah 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 it's a, it's a great mechanic as yeah well. uh, it's colorful it's nice and you can play in a cafe i've played tons of times mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a great game to have with you in in any case yes yeah 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 so. If I had a normal list, that totally would have made my list yeah. easily. Mm -hmm. Instead, I have this weird... If I was a normal person. But anyway, yeah. An excellent number two. Uh, but not as good as my number one. 
which I'm betting you haven't played, Shadowrun Crossfire. What? <laughs> what? I don't even know what Shadowrun Crossfire is no. a cooperative deck builder adventure game. Um, uh, you know, and so a deck builder in you know the same kind of style as Dominion or whatnot. There's a whole bunch of bad guys attacking us. Our deck is is who we are and what kind of equipment and special abilities we have that we're able to fight off all the bad guys. It's a very very fast game. At most takes maybe a half an hour, and it is. Uh, have you ever played Ghost Stories? I think so. Yeah, Ghost Stories is a very well known cooperative game for just being incredibly punishingly hard. You know, the, the game just throws endless waves of bad guys at you and you think there's no way we could possibly win and most of the times you won't. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadowrun Crossfire is kind of the card game version of that. It's, um, you know, it's very tough. It just beats you senseless. And, um, you know, Jen and I, I mean, we played the game well over 50, 60 times now and we still wow. maybe win 30% of the time. Um, but, the thing is, every time you play, if you, oh, you know we're going to lose. Okay, the bad guys are going to get us, and we are not going to survive. We did not play as smart as we should have. Uh, you can always go for as soon as we're playing, and you know, if one of us gets knocked out by the bad guys, the other player has one last chance to abort the mission. So if you get knocked out, and you probably will, because it's a rough, mean, nasty game to the players. I, if I can survive one round and all the bad guys that were on you jump over and jump me and, and the guys who are on me are still fighting me, if I can somehow survive that, then thematically what's happened is we've successfully aborted the mission. I've grabbed you and drug you out of there to safety. And that is, for us, the opportunity for a game that is so harsh and cruel and unforgiving that you'll lose more times than not. The thing is, Jen, I think we've almost never lost because as long as you plan, you're like, okay, we're not going to make it this time. We need to start preparing to abort. If you can survive that abort, uh, you can still consider that a win because this game gives you experience points. And the more points you have, it's not just a thing um, you, oh, well, we'll, use, we'll level up while we're playing this game. You don't. You level up between games. The reason we played this game so many times is because Every time we either get a win or get an abort, we get more points and we're saving them up to level up our characters and become stronger and stronger. It, it has kind of a Diablo kind of feel to it. You just want to keep playing, getting points to level up and be, you know, become more and more powerful. And for us, me especially, Jen likes it a lot. I love it. I almost have a hard time wanting to play anything else. Because, yeah, you know what? Yeah, you and I, we could sit down and play Jaipur and that would be absolutely lovely. But if we play Shadowrun Crossfire, I'll get some more experience points so I can level my character up more. Right. You know, and it's like this compelling, compulsive thing. And this is another game that originally came in a big, gigantic box, but if you get the expansion, everything it fits in the little, tiny expansion box. Because it's a deck builder. It's, mo it's almost entirely just um, cards and a few little tokens to keep track of life meters and mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's awesome. It's the bee's knees. It is my second favorite game of all time. I love it so yeah. much. Uh, yeah, I just like a... a I, I like a deck builder that is cold and cruel and merciless, or, or a cooperative game that really pushes hard. And the interesting thing is, Jen doesn't. Jen likes cooperative games like Pandemic that are, are challenging, but they, they're, they're, they're forgiving. They, you know, they, 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 sometimes they'll take it easy on you. Shadow and Crossfire never does, but Jen likes it anyway. So that makes it all the more special for me. And it's why it's my number one. Wouldn't leave home without it. Shadow and Crossfire, but what about you? What beats Jaipur, the game that you actually carry with you more than any other? Uh, yes, I think the number one should be of course high pocket. Yes, right? I mean, uh, I think this is the best abstract uh, strategic mm -hmm. game ever. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks bigger because of this, <laughs> but it's like so tiny. You don't even need that, I bet. You've you've memorized what all the bugs uh, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it just has these um, how you call them um, uh, tiles, tiles. Yeah, tiles, yeah, 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 little hexagon tiles. Uh, with uh, with bugs, you need to know how each uh, bug moves, mm -hmm. and it's you know don't need any setup, no, no nothing. So you can play it anywhere, mm -hmm. really. Have and you ever played it underwater? I've seen pictures of people really? with scuba masks oh, on playing God. it, um, you know, at the That's bottom. That's a great idea. Yeah, you totally could. Especially here in, in Malta, Malta. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's a great idea. That's. What I'm gonna put that on, <laughs> on your list on your bucket list I'm to do. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> And I think, yeah, it's, it's a really good strategy game, better than chess, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, it's a, not, a lot more fun. I think there might be a few people who would disagree on that. There's a few chess yeah. heads out there. Yeah, I know, I know, but maybe they haven't played uh, high pocket. Wow, you are throwing <laughs> down. Know. First of all, undefeated in Lost Cities, yeah, taking any challenger, I'm sure. Anywhere mm -hmm. in the world, if somebody walks up to you, they say, exactly. I've got it in my backpack right mm -hmm. now, you show me what you got. 
Yes, I'm going to take them on that. Yeah. <laughs> but Hive better than chess. I agree. I, I mean, so. I, well, don't I don't know. know. I, I, more fun than chess. It's a lot more it's, fun if you tell me to play so chess. Cool. I'll be like, oh, I don't have like one and a half hours, you know, and, and it's like so silent. Yeah. This yeah. is a lot more fun and it's the same amount of kind of strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's similar in, in style. I mean, you've got yeah, your pieces, you're yeah, moving yeah. them around. All the pieces have different rules for how mm -hmm. they move. It's kind of like, yeah, it, it kind of has a chess like thing, but it's chess for the rest of us. Chess for yeah, for people yeah. who want to just have a, a goofy, fun, silly time with cute, adorable little bugs yeah, that crawl exactly. all over each other. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and you're right. I. Yeah. Um, yeah you can again, this, your list, I, mean, I think, wins. I think I'm already imagining the comment section right now that what, what was Rado talking about? The Cardboard <laughs> Rhino knows travel games. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for joining me, Eleni. Thank you very it's, much. I've wanted to do this for a long time, as we both live in Malta. We've uh, known each other yeah, for a while. Me too, actually. And I have some people commenting, uh, asking me to do a video with you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we finally made it. There you go. Before you Two days before we leave forever. Yeah. <sighs> and it was great. Um, yeah, it was a good list. Of, I've always wanted to play um, Skull and Roses. Because uh, what's it? Um, Shut Up and Sit Down. They rave about it. Uh, yes. I first heard it from yes, them. Yes, yeah, they true. really love that. True. And Cockroach Poker. Cockroach Poker. You've got some really smart things. But I'm glad I surprised you. You have only thought Hanabi was a two-player game. Yes, that I is crazy. <laughs> Hopefully some people will make fun of you as much as they make fun of me for that. Oh, cool. But uh, the best thing of today was Hive Underwater, Hive Pokemon Underwater. I'm gonna <laughs> I want to see that video on your channel. Exactly, I'm going to do I've that. I've got to see it, I've got to see it. Okay, folks, that is it. 20 travel games. 10 of them good, 10 of them making no sense whatsoever. But hopefully you enjoyed it. Again, you can check out Eleni's channel, Cardboard Rhino. The links are down in the show notes. You can hit the I in whichever corner it is. And otherwise, I hope you have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Eleni, say bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Bye-bye.